Hello everyone. Welcome to the Best My Test TOEFL Independent Writing video series. Today's video is about understanding the six question types of the TOEFL Independent Essay Questions. When you start the TOEFL Independent Writing task, you'll be asked a question. Your job is to plan and write an essay in response to this question. It'll help if you understand the different types of writing questions you may encounter. Let's take a look at them now. Before we begin learning about the six different question types, let's have a look at the basic high-scoring essay structure. First is the introductory paragraph. The introduction paragraph contains the general background information about the essay topic and a thesis statement. A thesis statement includes your main opinion on the essay topic and a preview of your key points which you'll be developing in the body paragraphs. We'll cover how to write an introductory paragraph in another video. OK, let's move on to the body paragraphs. Each body paragraph is used to explain one key point you introduced in the introduction paragraph. Generally speaking, a high-scoring essay has three body paragraphs, but if you find yourself running out of time, you can just write two. After you complete your body paragraphs, it'll be time to write your conclusion. The conclusion paragraph summarizes each of your key points. It contains a restatement of the thesis statement you wrote in your introduction and a brief summary of your main ideas. This five-paragraph structure approach can be used for five out of the six essay question types. The compare and contrast question type is the only essay question that will require a different structure. We'll talk about compare and contrast questions later in the video. The first independent question type on our list is agree or disagree. An agree or disagree question will give you a statement of opinion and ask you whether you agree or disagree with that statement. You will also have to provide specific reasons and examples to support your position. Here is an example. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? All students should be required to study art and music in secondary school. Use specific reasons to support your answer. For this type of question, your essay structure should have four or five paragraphs. Here's the breakdown. OK, now let's look at the second essay question type, support or oppose. This type of question is very similar to the agree or disagree question. However, instead of asking you to agree or disagree with the statement, the support or oppose question will ask you to support or oppose a situation. Here's an example. It has recently been announced that a new restaurant may be built in your neighborhood. Do you support or oppose this plan? In this type of essay, be sure to focus your reasons on the pros and cons of the situation. If you decide to support the plan, then your essay will need to focus more on the pros, but don't be afraid to mention a con. For example, you can talk about how building the restaurant in the neighborhood will cost taxpayers money, but it'll be worth the cost because you feel it will benefit the whole community. You will need to give reasons why it will benefit the community. Okay, now the next question type on our list is a preference question. A preference question will give you a choice between two options and ask you which option you prefer. You'll need to provide specific reasons and examples to explain why you prefer that option. Here is an example. Some people prefer to live in a small town. Others prefer to live in a big city. Which place would you prefer to live in? Use specific reasons and details to support your answer. Generally speaking, preference questions are personal in nature. They ask about your preference, not what you think is best for people in a general or in a group of people. For this reason, you can rely on personal experience and reasons to support your answer. OK, moving along to our next question type, the if or imaginary question. An if or imaginary question will give you a hypothetical or imagined situation and ask what you would do or what you would choose. Rather than choosing between the two things or two opinions, you are typically not limited in your choice. That is, you can choose anything that fits the situation. Here is an example. If you could invent something new, what product would you develop? 
use specific details to explain why this invention is needed. Remember, when you write your response to an if or an imaginary question, you should use modals such as would and could when you're discussing a hypothetical, imagined or unreal situation, rather than will and can. The final question type, using the five paragraph structure you learned at the beginning of the video, is description or explanation question. A description or explanation question will ask you to describe a certain type of person, especially the good qualities of a person, or explain something in the world. You might have to choose something to explain, or you might be given something specific to explain. You might have to explain why something is beneficial, important, or significant. Or you might have to explain the reasons for or effects of something. Here are some examples. How do movies and television influence people's behavior? Give reasons and examples to support your answer. Some people say that computers have made life easier and more convenient. Other people say that computers have made life more complex and stressful. What's your opinion? Use specific reasons and examples to support your answer. Neighbors are people who live near us. In your opinion, what are the qualities of a good neighbor? Use specific details and examples in your answer. Okay, this is our last question type on our list and is a little tricky. The compare and contrast question can fool you, so you need to pay attention to what it's really asking. Generally speaking, you will see two variations of this type of question. First, the question might give you two subjects and ask you to compare and contrast them. That is, to show the similarities and differences between them. However, the question might ask you to compare the advantages and disadvantages of only one subject. So read the question carefully. Both variations could also ask you to state your personal opinion or your personal preference. Here are the examples of the first variation. It has been said that not everything that is learned is contained in books. Compare and contrast knowledge gained from experience with knowledge gained from books. What's your opinion? Which source is more important? Why? Some people trust their first impressions about a person's character because they believe that these judgments are generally correct. Other people do not judge a person's character quickly because they believe that first impressions are often wrong. Compare these two attitudes. Which attitudes do you agree with? Support your choice with specific examples. Some people believe that the best way of learning about life is by listening to the advice of family and friends. Other people believe that the best way of learning about life is through personal experience. Compare the advantages of these two different ways of learning about life. Which do you think is preferable? Use specific examples to support your preference. And here are some examples of the second variation. Some young children spend a great amount of their time practicing sports. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this. Use specific reasons and examples to support your answer. A company has announced that it wishes to build a large factory near your community. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this new influence on your community. Do you support or oppose the factory? Explain your position. So, can you see the difference between them? When you write a comparison and contrast essay, you need to be aware of what the question is asking. Is it asking for the comparison of two different things, or is it asking you to describe advantage and disadvantage of one thing? Let's look at the essay structure of both variations. As you can see, the major difference is how you write your two body paragraphs. When the question is asking you to compare aspects of two subjects, each body paragraph compares and contrasts two subjects in one aspect. When the question is asking you to compare pros and cons of one subject, your first body paragraph discusses the advantages and your second body paragraph discusses the disadvantages. I want to end this video with emphasizing how important understanding these question types and their essay structures are to getting a high score. It is in fact the most important step to getting a high TOEFL score on the independent writing section. The reason for this is, being organized will give you more time to focus on your writing. 
You'll likely finish your essay before time runs out and giving yourself the opportunity to proofread. In addition, your essay will be more cohesive compared to someone who didn't organize their thoughts beforehand. We hope you've enjoyed this video. The next video in our TOEFL Independent Writing video series will be how to write the introductory paragraph part one. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.